A staple of 80s children's films, Labyrinth is an epic coming-of-age fairy tale filled with goblins, beasts, and bogs of eternal stench. The film was Jim Henson's last feature and has been elevated to nostalgic heights since its poor box office reception in 1986. It has the perfection of David Bowie's enchanting glam rock vocals. It's got a ton of kick-ass Muppets. It has dogs riding other dogs around, but most importantly, it has Jennifer Connelly leading young girls everywhere from childhood to adulthood. Someone save me! Someone take me away from this awful place! In order to fully explain this movie, I'd need 13 hours, three PhDs, and drugs? Maybe? Probably. I would need drugs. But I have none of those things handy, so instead I will attempt to explain all the twists and turns of the labyrinth in two minutes or less. In a fit of teen angst, Sarah, that's Jennifer Connelly, calls upon the Goblin King to free her from the agonizing responsibility of babysitting her baby brother, as one does. Enter David Bowie in all his tight pants androgynous Goblin King glory as Jareth, who sets Sarah on a quest where she must go through the labyrinth, find the castle beyond the Goblin City, and retrieve her infant brother. Why, you ask? Unclear at first, but short answer, he likes her. Sarah meets a collection of Muppets, including a groovy talking worm and a goblin named Hogwarts, sorry, Hoggle, who spends the movie both leading her through and directly to the obstacles in the labyrinth. To be fair, he's two-faced. That is he literally wears his second face on his back. Meanwhile, up in the castle, a king and his goons have a swinging party, throw babies 20 feet in the air, and sing about the power of voodoo. Who do you do? Sarah solves a crazy difficult riddle, but still falls into a dungeon called an oubliette, but not before we've all been traumatized by these terrifying hundred helping hands. Look at them! Needing a new sidekick, Sarah saves and befriends an adorable yeti-like creature named Ludo after he's tortured by small goblins carrying around even smaller goblins on sticks. Then some talking door knockers lead Sarah to a swamp where Ludo falls through a hole in the ground and Sarah fights off a freaky group of flame-throwing flamingo muppets. She she escapes thanks to Hoggle, who has come back to help, and yes, also has a secret plan to give Sarah a magical roofy peach. The pair are banished to the Bog of Eternal Stench, where they meet up again with Ludo and the feisty Sir Didymus. And here is where Hoggle finally betrays Sarah and feeds her the poison peach, where she falls into a deep trance and easily the most iconic scene in the film. In a virginal white ball gown, Sarah walks through a masked ball, underscored by Bowie's vocals and vague sexual tension that comes to a boiling point as Sarah and a dude thrice her senior yearn for each other across the ballroom. Sarah finally realizes it's all too much too soon and breaks the spell by smashing a chair and the patriarchy against a mirror. Sarah finally gets back to her quest and storms the gates to the Goblin City. Hoggle finally grows a pair and decides to help regaining Sarah's trust. Why, I don't know. Jareth sends troops after them, but Ludo's Rolling Stones come to the rescue and the gang find themselves trapped in a David Bowie ballad in MC Escher stairs where Sarah figures out this puzzle and finally says the magic words, you have no power over me. And then all of her friends from the labyrinth join her for a celebration party because Jareth is defeated, except he's not. He's an owl who lurks outside and flies away. So, there you have it. We may never know what became of Sarah or her brother, but we're always big on fan theories, so leave them in the comments. And in true Labyrinth fashion, uh, we just want to say that we all know who started the leggings trend. It was David Bowie in this movie, not yoga. They're not yoga pants, they're Bowie pants, so call them what they are.